All right, we are back once again. Uh, we've gotten through uh, time series and we're sort of back in the microeconomics world now. In this video, what we're going to be doing is looking at some limited dependent variable models, uh, the kinds of things that you might use if your dependent variable is not a continuous variable. Uh, so for example, we're going to be going over things like probit and logit are the main ones that we are going to do. So uh, how are we going to run a probit or logit regression in R? Uh, so interestingly, there's actually not a specific probit or logit command that we're going to use. Instead, we're going to use something called a generalized linear model. Uh, and what this is, uh, so you can sort of imagine, think about a, a regression, just a regular ordinary least squares regression. You've got your dependent variable. You say that y is equal to alpha plus beta times x1 plus beta 2 times x2 and so on, right? A generalized linear model is exactly like that, except we take that alpha plus beta times x1 plus beta times x2, et cetera, et cetera, and we put it through a function first. That's it, right? We just put it through a function first. And if it's a probit model, we're put, that function that we're putting it through is the normal cumulative distribution function. Uh, and if it is a logit model, we're putting it basically through the logit function. Right? So that's all that we're doing. It's the exact same idea. We're taking that regression, but we're just, instead of just putting it in there by itself, we're running it through a function first. And this will allow us to account for things like binary dependent variables. All right, so we're gonna use a generalized linear model. Let's do that. So we're gonna use the GLM command and we're gonna use it on the same data we've been working with for most of our micro stuff. Uh, we loaded in the foreign package and then the wage one data. Uh, and what we're gonna do in this data is we're gonna, we're gonna predict whether or not you are married. Now being married, of course, is a binary variable. If I say, you know, give me a table of the married variable, just gonna give me zero and one, binary data. Uh, if we just if we write if we try to predict being married using just regular OLS, it's going to give us a couple of problems that we'd rather avoid. So we're going to use probit or logit. So uh, we're going to go ahead and run a probit model just to get started. We're going to do this with the GLM command. So our probit model, okay? Uh, we're going to use the GLM function. Uh, we're going to put in a regression formula exactly like we've been doing it for linear models. No real difference at all. So we have the dependent variable being married. Uh, we're going to do that as a function of, uh, let's say, uh, gender and education. Oh, and let's toss in some regional variables to it. I forget what the names of those were. Uh, northern, South, and West. Let's do that. Great, so now we have our model. We're gonna, we're gonna predict uh, whether or not you're married using your gender, your level of education, uh, and where you're from, the region that you're from. We're gonna do this with the data set wage one. Okay, so now, one last thing we gotta do before we run this. I just told it that it's a GLM so far, but I haven't told it what kind of, regret of GLM that I'm running. Remember, I just said that we're running it through a function, so it needs to know what that function is. Is it gonna be the normal cumulative distribution function for a probit? Is it gonna be the logit function for a logit? Is it gonna be something else? For example, you could also use this to run a Poisson regression, which is not something we typically do in economics, but maybe we should, who knows? Uh, anyway, we're gonna do, um, uh, so we're gonna use the family uh, option here and what the family is basically saying what is what kind of uh, function are we running and the kind that we're doing is binomial because we're looking with binomial data binary data uh, and then we got to tell it what kind of binomial link or function we're going to run it through we're going to say link equals probit okay uh, so we can go ahead and run that there we go. So now we have our probit model. Uh, we can look at our probit model using Stargazer in the same way that we have been doing for everything else. Library Stargazer. Let's load that in. And we're going to do Stargazer, our probit model, and type equals text. Let's say, take a look at that. So we got a regression model just like we would normally. right? Of course, the interpretation of these coefficients is a little bit different than we would get with a regular regression. Uh, but that's it. So, all right, so we don't run a probit model. How about we run a logit model? All right, so conveniently, it's the exact same thing. We have that uh, GLM function right there that we were already using. So now we're going to do a logit model. The only difference is that now we are going to run it with a logit link. Right? Similarly, if we were going to run, say, a Poisson regression, it would look exactly like this, but we would have a log link. Look in the GLM options. You can see all the different options that there are for the, what you can put as the family, okay? Uh, so we can run that as well. We can look at that as, with Stargazer as well. And there we have it. 
Okay, so we've run our probit model, uh, we've run our logit model, we've taken a look at both of them. Uh, now, as I mentioned, the interpretation of these coefficients is a little bit different from a regular regression, right? You, you sort of want these coefficients to mean uh, this is the effect on the probability uh, that the dependent variable is equal to one, but that's not what these are. What these are is these are coefficients that go inside that function. Uh, but because there's a function in the way, we can't just say that it's increasing the probability directly. You'll learn all this stuff in your actual class. So often what we want to do with a probit or a logit model is to get the marginal effects. So we want to take these coefficients that we have and turn them into something that says, hey, if you get one more year of education, I predict that your, uh, your probability of being married is going to go up by blank percent. Okay. So in order to do that, we need the marginal effects package. Uh, or library MFX stands for marginal effects. Let's load that in. Uh, so all we got to do to run marginal effects is to uh, to basically run it through the logit marginal effects function or the probit marginal effects function. Uh, so we're going to get marginal effects for probit. So it's going to be probit MFX, and we're going to pl plug in the model that we already ran. Uh, we're going to tell it what data we're working with, right? We want to, we want to say we're, we're still using this model and I want you to predict the marginal effects within this data set that we are already using. You could theoretically put a different data set in there to get the marginal effects with the same model, whatever. Anyway, now there's one other thing that we need to put in here. Uh, it's the at means, uh, at mean option here. Uh, now there's two different kinds of ways to get par uh, marginal effects, basically. There's two, and there's basically two different questions to ask with marginal effects. You want to know what's the effect of this variable on the probability that the dependent variable is equal to one, right? That's what a marginal effect is. There's two different ways to interpret that question. One could be, okay, well, uh, we have to keep in mind that the, the actual marginal effect is going to be different depending on the values of the variables themselves. Okay, because we have that nonlinear function that we're running our regression stuff through, uh, you know, the difference between one and two is going to be different than the difference between four and five, right? Imagine that function was a square function. It's not, but imagine it was, right? Going from an x of one to an x of two would increase our dependent variable uh, by going from one to four. Going from four to five would increase it from 16 to 25, a much bigger change. So we need to account for that the fact we need to know what values the, the right-hand side variables are taking on to understand the marginal effects. So there's two different ways to do this. Uh, and that's the at means version. So we want to basically say, we're going to take the mean of all the independent variables and plug those in and say, we want the marginal effect at those means. Okay, that's with the at mean option. And so we just do at mean equals true. We can run that. We get our results here. Uh, we could also do at mean equals false. And what that's going to do uh, is that is going to, instead of taking the average of the variables and then getting the marginal effect at that average, it's going to get the marginal effect for every person in the sample and then average over them. The fact that we need for either the true or the false version, it has to take the averages of something. That's why we need to tell it what data set we're working with in order to get these marginal effects. So we can do it for true, uh, at mean equals true or at mean equals false. Uh, we get slightly different results either way. Um, that's how we can do it. We can do the exact same thing with, uh, with logit. We can get marginal effects for logit. Okay, and it's just the exact same thing, except we're doing it with logit marginal effects. And we want to plug in our logit model. We still have to specify at mean and the data set. There we go. Uh, so that's basically it. That's how you can run a probit or a logit model, uh, and that's how you can get marginal effects from those models. Uh, one other thing you may or may not run across in your class is an ordered probit or an ordered logit. Uh, and so probit and logit are for data that can either be a 0 or a 1. Uh, but what if it's a 0 or a 1 or a 2? Or a 0, 1, a 2, or a 3, or a 4? Or a 2, a 3, or 4, or a 5, right? As long as there's an order to it, but you're not, you don't want to say that you know, these aren't like, it's not really one more, it's just the next level. You want an ordered probit or an ordered logit. So let's do that. So in order to run that, we are first going to need to get the mass package. I actually don't know what mass stands for, but there it is, probably something about statistics. Uh, and that has the P-O-L-R function in it. So we're going to run an ordered logit. Uh, this time we're going to use the different levels of uh, education as our dependent variable because that has different levels, right? Uh, so it's gonna, we're going to have our ordered, uh, 
probit model. Okay, it's going to be P-O-L. R. Uh, and so we're going to put in a regression formula just as we do. This time the dependent variable is going to have different levels to it. So we're going to do education. And let's just go ahead and do that on uh, gender and uh, the same regional variables. There we go. Uh, so we're going to need to tell it what data set we are working with. Uh, we're also going to have, have to tell it to uh, uh, return the what's called the Hess matrix, which is what it uses to calculate the standard errors. Don't worry about that too much. You're not going to know how what what that is doing exactly, but you're going to want to do it. So we'll run our uh, ordered probit model. Oh, and I forgot. We have to tell R that the dependent variable is in fact a factor if it's not already considered to be one. We can go ahead and use Stargazer to look at the ordered probit, uh, and that will give us the ordered probit. And what that's basically saying is these coefficients will you know make it more likely that you're going to get to the next level, right? Uh, we can also get marginal effects uh, for the ordered uh, logit and probit uh, here. Uh, that will require another uh, package. In particular, that's going to be the ERER -E package. These package names are getting a little esoteric, but don't worry, most of the time you're not going to need this particular one. Uh, and so that's going to be uh, the, uh, we're going to get marginal effects for our ordered probit. That's going to be the OCME command right there. Uh, we're going to run in our ordered probit model right there. And if we run that, it will give us the marginal effect uh, of each of these different uh, values. Now you notice there's a whole lot of marginal effects here. Basically what this is saying is, you know, we have to consider how each variable affects our movement from each level. So it gets complex. Again, you're probably not going to need to know this, but if you are going to use ordered probit or logit, it's good to have these commands on tap. All right, uh, that's the basics of it. That same stuff I just showed you with ordered probit, you can easily do with ordered logit as well. You just need to change the model. Uh, it's the method option, which we actually didn't specify here. Um, but it's method. Uh, we're going to set that to probe. We set it to probe here. We can set it to logit and it would do logit just as easily. Uh, so that's how you can do some basic stuff with limited dependent variables. All right, that's it. Thank you.